Heavenly Father, we're grateful and thankful for you this evening. We're grateful for your love and your mercy and your kindness. We thank you, O oh God, for all that you are doing. And we ask, O oh God, that you'll consecrate us, Lord, as we go forward in the scripture. We ask that your Holy Spirit will guide us, O oh Lord, that there will be conviction and there will also be correction. We're grateful for your love. We're grateful for your hedge of protection. We're grateful for this roof over our head. We give you thanks and praise, honor and glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 22. The people of Jerusalem made Ahaziah Jehoram's youngest son king. Raiders from the desert who had come with the Arabs against the settlement had killed all the older sons. That's how Ahaziah, son of Jehoram, king of Judah, became king. Ahaziah was 22 years old when he became king, but reigned only one year in Jerusalem. His mother was Athaliah, granddaughter of Omri. He lived and ruled just like the Ahab family had done, his mother training him in evil ways. God also considered him evil, related by both marriage and sin to the Ahab clan. After the death of his father, he attended the sin school of Ahab and graduated with a degree in doom. He did what they taught him, went with Joram, son of Ahab, king of Israel, in the war against Hazael, king of Aram at Ramoth Gilead. Joram, wounded by the Arameans, retreated to Jezreel to recover from the wounds he received in Ramah in his war with Hazael, king of Aram. Ahaziah, son of Jehoram, king of Judah, paid a visit to Joram, son of Ahab, on his sickbed at Jezreel. The fate of Ahaziah when he went to visit was God's judgment on him. When Ahaziah arrived at Jezreel, he and Joram met with Jehu, son of Nimshi, whom God had already authorized to destroy the dynasty of Ahab. Jehu, already at work, executing doom on the dynasty of Ahab, came upon the captains of Judah and Ahaziah's nephews, part of the Ahaziah delegation, and killed them outright. Then he sent out a search party looking for Ahaziah himself. They found him hiding out in Samaria and hauled him back to Jehu, and Jehu killed him. They didn't, though, just leave his body there out of respect for his grandfather, Jehoshaphat, famous as a sincere seeker after God, they gave him a decent burial. But there was no one left in Ahaziah's family capable of ruling the kingdom. When Ahaziah's mother, Athaliah, saw that her son was dead, she took over. She began by massacring the entire royal family. Jehoshaphat, daughter of King Jehoram, took Ahaziah's son, Johash, and kidnapped him from among the king's sons, slated for slaughter. She hid him and his nurse in a private room away from Athaliah. So Jehoshaphat, daughter of King Jehoram, and Ahaziah's sister, she was also the wife of Jehoiada, the priest saved Joash from the murderous queen Athaliah. He was there with her, hidden away for six years, in the temple of God, Athaliah, oblivious to his existence, ruled the country. Second Chronicles chapter 23. In the seventh year, the priest Jehoiada decided to make his move and worked out a strategy with certain influential officers in the army. He picked Azariah, son of Jeroham, Ishmael, son of Jehonanan, Azariah, son of Obed, Messiah, son of Adiah, and Elishaphat, son of Zikri, as his associates. They dispersed through Judah and called in the Levites from all the towns in Judah, along with the heads of families they met in Jerusalem. The gathering met in the temple of God. They made a covenant there in the temple. The priest Jehoiada showed them the young prince and addressed them. Here is the son of the king. He is going to rule just as God promised regarding the sons of David. Now this is what you must do. A third of you priests and Levites who come on duty on the Sabbath are to be posted as security guards at the gates. Another third will guard the palace 
and the other third will guard the foundation gate. All the people will gather in the courtyards of the temple of God. No one may enter the temple of God except the priests and designated Levites. They are permitted in because they've been consecrated, but all the people must do the work assigned them. The Levites are to form a ring around the young king, weapons at the ready. Kill anyone who tries to break through your ranks. Your job is to stay with the king at all times and places, coming and going. All the Levites and officers obeyed orders of Jehoiada the priest. Each took charge of his men, both those who came on duty on the Sabbath and those who went off duty on the Sabbath, for Jehoiada the priest hadn't exempted any of them from duty. Then the priest armed the officers with spears and the large and small shields originally belonging to King David that were stored in the temple of God. Well armed, the guards took up their assigned positions for protecting the king from one end of the temple to the other, surrounding both altar and temple. Then the priests brought the prince into view, crowned him, handed him the scroll of God's covenant and made him king. As Jehoiada and his sons anointed him, they shouted, Long live the king! Athaliah, hearing all the commotion, the people running around and praising the king, came to the temple to see what was going on. Astonished, she saw the young king standing at the entrance, flanked by the captains and heralds, with everybody beside themselves with joy, trumpets blaring, the choir and orchestra leading the praise. Athaliah ripped her robes in dismay and shouted, Treason! Treason! Jehoiada the priest ordered the military officers, drag her outside and kill anyone who tries to follow her. The priest had said, don't kill her inside the temple of God. So they dragged her out to the palace's horse coral and there they killed her. Jehoiada made, now made a covenant between himself and the king and the people they were to be God's special people. The people poured into the temple of Baal and tore it down, smashing altar and images to smithereens. They killed Matin, the priest of Baal, in front of the altar. Jehoiada turned the care of God's temple over to the priests and Levites, the way David had directed originally. They were to offer the whole burnt offerings of God as set out in the revelation of Moses and with the praise and song as directed by David. He also assigned security guards at the gates of God's temple so that no one who was unprepared could enter. Then he got everyone together, officers, nobles, governors, and the people themselves and escorted the king down from the temple of God through the upper gate and placed him on the royal throne. Everyone celebrated the event, and the city was safe and undisturbed. Athalia had been killed. No more Athalia terror. Second Chronicles chapter 24. Joash was seven years old when he became king. He was king for 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Gazelle, which is Zibia. She was from Beersheba. Taught and trained by Jehoiada the priest, Joash did what pleased God throughout Jehoiada's lifetime. Jehoiada picked out two wives for him. He had a family of both sons and daughters. The time came when Joash determined to renovate the temple of God. He got the priests and Levites together and said, Circulate through the towns of Judah every year and collect money from the people to repair the temple of your God. You are in charge of carrying this out. But the Levites dragged their feet and didn't do anything. Then the king called in Jehoiada, the chief priest, and said, Why haven't you made the Levites bring in from Judah and Jerusalem the tax Moses, servant of God, and the congregation set for the upkeep of the place of worship? You can see how bad things are. Wicked Queen Athalia and her sons let the temple of God go to ruin and took all its sacred artifacts for use in their worship. Following the king's orders, they made a chest and placed it at the entrance to the temple of God. And they sent out a tax notice throughout Judah and Jerusalem. Pay the tax that Moses, the servant of God, set when Israel was in the wilderness. The people and their leaders were glad to do it and cheerfully brought their money until the chest was full. Whenever the Levites brought the chest in for a royal audit and found it to be full, the king's secretary and the official of the chief priest would empty the chest and put it back in its place. Day after day, they did this and collected a lot of money. 
The king and Jehoiada gave the money to the managers of the temple project. They in turn paid the masons and carpenters for the repair work on the temple of God. The construction workers kept at their job steadily until the restoration was complete. The house of God was as good as new. When they had finished the work, they returned the surplus money to the king and Jehoiada, who used the money for making sacred vessels for temple worship, vessels for the daily worship, for the whole burnt offerings, bowls and other gold and silver liturgical artifacts. Whole burnt offerings were made regularly in the temple of God throughout Jehoiada's lifetime. He died at a ripe old age, 130 years old. They buried him in the royal cemetery because he had such a distinguished life of service to Israel and God and God's temple. But after the death of Jehoiada, things fell apart. The leaders of Judah made a formal presentation to the king and he went along with them. Things went from bad to worse. They deserted the temple of God and took up with the cult of intimate goddesses. An angry cloud hovered over Judah and Jerusalem because of this sin. God sent prophets to straighten them out, warning of judgment, but nobody paid attention. Then the Spirit of God moved Zechariah, son of Jehoiada, the priest, to speak up. God's word, we have you, why have you deliberately walked away from God's commandments? You can't live this way. If you walk out on God, he'll walk out on you. But they worked out a plot against Zechariah, and with the complicity of the king, he actually gave the order. They murdered him, pelting him with rocks right in the court of the temple of God. That's the thanks King Joash showed the loyal Jehoiada, the priest who had made him king. He murdered Jehoiada's son. Zechariah's last words were, Look, God, make them pay for this. A year or so later, Aramean troops attacked Joash. They invaded Ju Judah and Jerusalem, massacred the leaders, and shipped all their plunder back to the king in Damascus. The Aramean army was quite small, but God used them to wipe out Joash's the large army, their punishment for deserting God, the God of their ancestors. Arameans implemented God's judgment against Joash. They left Joash badly wounded and his own servants finished him off. It was a palace conspiracy, avenging the murder of the son of Jehoiada the priest. They killed him in his bed. Afterward, they buried him in the city of David, but he was not honored with a grave in the royal cemetery. The temple conspirators were Zabad, whose mother was Shimeath from Ammon, and Jehozabad, whose mother was Shimerith from Moab. The story of his sons, the many sermons preached to Joash, and the account of his repairs on the temple of God can be found contained in the commentary on the royal history. Amaziah, Joash's son, was the next king. Amen. Amen.